behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Just hard to understand it without having someone break it down in, in English, plain English. Okay. So we have this test actually at Tech Safari, which is that my 16 year old brother has to understand it and read it before we publish anything, oh. um, just so anyone can get it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I've read, I've read uh, most of it uh, and it's very easy to understand. You make it seem fun, which is a good thing because many people think when you think of tech, you think ah, this is too complicated and it's, it has its own people, you know. Yeah. So it's good that we're changing the perception around, around technology because it's here to stay with us. So now uh, when we talk about tech startups <coughs> in Africa, give us an overview. How is it? How are we doing as tech startups in Africa? We're at an interesting time. Um, we're at a very interesting time. So I feel mm -hmm. like we're at the end of the beginning um, in some ways. So we've just awesome. had this big, uh, you know, there was kind of not much activity until 2020. And then in 2020, 2019, 2020, a lot of people started investing from around the world mm -hmm. into African companies. Um, and that was really interesting. You know, we had all these new companies come out, um, a lot of uh, new founders come out, a lot of really cool ideas. Um, we're about to slow down, I think, a little bit because funding's harder to get. It's harder to raise capital. We're in a different economic climate. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we have this amazing like few years of just like new founders and new ideas and new people who now want to be a part of tech in Africa. Mm -hmm. So it's a really exciting time. I think it's a good time to be building. It's a good time to be building Always. in Africa. Yeah. But there's this thing that has been happening, especially in Kenya, when we talk about funding and how to, uh, startups are doing, and I'll give an example of um, this, this uh, one startup, Twiga, and they recently uh, laid off 33% of its workforce. Yeah. Uh, and you know, that's even after getting, um, there's this Hasla fund in yeah. Kenya, uh, they got around, three, I think it's um, 300 million, if I'm not wrong, yeah. which was supposed to help. but. You know they're still laying off after several layoffs uh, before that. Mm. So why is it? Why why are we in this situation? Yeah, and and you know Twig is one. There's many others. Uh, you know there's like uh, a company called Sendy, which also recently shut down mm. or is in the process of being bought. Um, there's a lot more companies like that. I think we're going to see more of that, to be honest. Okay. So it's kind of like two years ago. Uh, there was a lot of money that came into like Afri like startups across Africa, across Kenya, across Nigeria. Um, and then there was a lot of uh, demand for those companies to grow at all costs. Mm -hmm. So it was like, hey, just like go make money. Mm -hmm. um, but people didn't really think about how much they were spending when they went to grow. And mm -hmm. so, you know, companies like this where they were spending a lot of money to grow, um, grow the number of users or the number of, you know, uh, customers, they didn't think about how much they were spending and they end up spending too much. And now they're in a position where they're like, oh, wow, we're out of money. Mm. We need to cut the team. Like we need to scale things back. And you'll see Twigger also, they change. They've also changed what they're doing now. And, and they pivoted again to another idea. Okay. Um, they're trying to figure it out. So I think mm -hmm. there's been a lot, of, uh, a lot of money coming in, but not a lot of responsibility. Okay. Um, and this is kind of, I think it's a bit of a lesson too. If you're ever building something, you don't need a lot of money to make something good work. Um, mm -hmm. You can start small, build slowly, and build something that's sustainable. Um, okay. And those startups are doing very well. Okay. So, so the problem mostly was uh, lack of, or mismanagement of the money that they had initially. So if they probably use the money well, then they would still be, they would be at a better place than they are currently. I'd say so. And I'd also say like part of it's mismanagement. The other part is just the, the time, you know, like two years ago, everyone was like, you spend that money, um, go get customers at all costs. <laughs> <laughs> there's okay. more money out there. Today, there's not much money out there. So <laughs> it has changed a little bit. It's switched up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what, what, what does the startup need to do now? Because you've said that now is the time. It's good ground for, for uh, you know, creators to come on board. Yeah. So what does one need to do now in this time? To build a startup from scratch or yeah. to keep from going? From scratch mostly. Yeah, so I think it starts with like, what are you trying to do? Like, what's, what's the problem you're solving? Ultimately, mm -hmm. startups exist because they solve problems or make life easier and better for us. Yeah. Um, like Airbnb exists because it was solving the problem of like having to book a hotel all the time and having to go log in and, and mm -hmm. like make a booking and having this old system. So, I mean, it's thinking about like, where do you find the hardest problems? Is there a problem you think you can solve with tech or with a new idea? Mm -hmm. um, and then how do you build that in a way that's like, that, 
that uh, where you can just test things out. You know, I think I really I think it's awesome that we have a lot of founders mm -hmm. had these sort of like weekend projects or like nighttime projects that they work on, mm -hmm. which is cool ideas they're tinkering with. And sometimes they'll find something that actually really fits and there's demand for. Mm, all right. So the, the thing, the main thing here is if you want to build something, look for a problem that's there or a way that you'll ease in the lives of people, then that will probably work out well for you. Yeah, okay. totally. It's always like mm -hmm. if you fix a problem, customers will come and you'll have this, we call it product market fit. Have you heard of that term? Uh, not, not really. Okay. So <laughs> it's like, okay. yeah. <laughs> it's like when you have so much demand for what you're doing that you can't take it. Like mm -hmm. you're like, oh wow, I'm out of like all these pairs of shoes I'm trying to sell because everyone wants it. Uh, okay. That's when you know you're onto something mm -hmm. and founders build on top of that sense okay. of product market fit. So create a good demand. Now, uh, about funding for startups yeah. that are just coming up, it's a major problem. It's a, most startups come and complain about finding funding. So how can they best to get funding if they need it? Or how can they operate without funding if mm. possible? Yeah, I mean, like the idea is that you're also a business, right? So when yeah. you start a business, you want there to be money coming in to mm -hmm. pay for things too. So it's in a lot of cases, if you're established, you want to be thinking about, hey, how do I, um, how do I like grow my revenue so I can pay my bills, like yeah. pay for costs. Mm -hmm. So that's also important. I think if you're a new startup, there's a lot of places to find your first, you know, fifty thousand, one hundred thousand dollars in funding. If mm -hmm. you have a clear like product and some traction, a lot of accelerators that help you do that and help you grow relatively quickly. Okay. Um, but I think where the trouble is is when you're a big guy like Twigger, you don't, you're not looking for like one million, two million. You're looking for like thirty million exactly. US dollars. Exactly. Big money. It's a lot of money, right? It's and uh, <laughs> there's not much money going around now. Uh -huh. uh, and if you don't have good, like, say, revenue or fundamentals, me, let's say I'm an investor, I don't really want to invest in that. Mm. And so there's a disconnect there where these growth companies really need to sort it out and have, like, strong fundamentals. Okay. Yeah. Um, can you elaborate for us on mm -hmm. an example of a startup that, um, uh, you know, is addressing specific ma ma market gaps and is doing quite well? Yeah, sure. Okay. So actually, good coincidence. I was in the office of a startup yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'll, I'll give you two. Is that cool? Yeah, sure. Cool. So one was Cellulint. I think we're all kind of familiar with Cellulint mm. or Ting by Cellulint. So yeah. Cellulint's, yeah. Okay. Give us more, more details. So, that. so they're a payment processor. So if you go to buy a ticket, like say you buy a ticket from Nairobi to um, Mombasa on, on Jambo Jet, they mm -hmm. will process that payment for you. Uh -huh. And that sounds really easy, but actually processing payments is so it's hard. It's a lot of work. <laughs> it's so hard. Okay. You need like licenses, you need to set up accounts everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so Cellulint was one of the first companies that let you accept payments with M-Pesa oh, um, okay. in, in Kenya. And mm -hmm. so that's how they grew. Um, and they're doing really well. Like they've, they have like clear demand for their products. Okay. Um, they've been around for a while now mm -hmm. and they're just growing across Kenya, um, solving the problem of accepting payments. Cause that's actually really hard. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's the first, what's the other one? So there's another one I was spending time with yesterday called Letter. Um, and they're a logistics platform. So mm -hmm. have you ever ordered like say a pizza, um, on you know an app and you just don't know where it is or like how it's getting to you and yeah. you're kind of like an hour later you're like yo where's my pizza um, <laughs> these guys built the software that helps the companies uh -huh. that do that track their riders uh -huh. um, and give you updates but also more importantly help those companies move stuff from a to b mm -hmm. as efficiently as possible yeah, and like right. maximize how much they have in their, their trucks mm -hmm. and that's a big deal a lot of companies spend when you buy a product, about 50% of that product, whatever it is, is just the logistics costs. Mm -hmm. It's not the actual product. Okay. So they help you, they help companies cut that cost down. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. So they, they make, they've uh, made life easier. And that's what you were saying yeah. when you come up with, uh, with a startup, you, you create something that will solve a problem or will help one or the other. Tell us, um, which, what, what sort of ecosystem or what sort of uh, conducive environment does a country need to create for startups to thrive? And which country has really um, mm. had this mm. or really has this enabling startups? Interesting. Yeah, that's a really good question. I think uh, first and foremost, you need like policy that allows for startups to thrive. And I think that looks like having startup acts are helpful, having like free movement of talent, you know, like when you're building the best products 
on the continent. You mm. want talent from around the continent. True. Um, so you want, you know, talent from Nigeria, from like Zambia, from like Rwanda to be able to move here freely. Mm. Stuff like that's important. Um, it sounds boring, okay. but it's actually important to, <laughs> to <laughs> building an ecosystem. And then it's yeah. like, how do you get all, all these global players and, and other players from around um, the world invested and interested? I think Rwanda has done this really well. Mm, um, they have this beautiful like co-working space called Norskin, uh, Kigali House, and it's this like really nice space just for entrepreneurs. And their goal is to have 1,000 entrepreneurs working from there mm -hmm. in Kigali. Um, yeah. And they have all these new accelerators and funds that are setting up shop in Rwanda because the government's saying, hey, we'll help you invest in these companies mm -hmm. um, if you come here. So I think it's like bringing a lot of them over, like intentional about building the startup startup mm. ecosystem okay and i've really seen rwanda coming coming up very fast kenya i think kenya we are number three in terms of um in africa okay people who have the most startups i think the first one in south africa then nigeria and then kenya but do you see <laughs> how do you see us doing in terms of comparing us to to rwanda how they've yeah. created that system how are we doing kenya compared to to rwanda yeah, I think there's potential. I think there's talk of more happening in the startup space uh, in terms mm -hmm. of policy. Mm -hmm. I, I would say like um, in East Africa, like Kenya is the, the powerhouse when it comes to like tech and startups. And everyone, even if you're operating a company in Rwanda, mm -hmm. generally CEOs and founders will move to uh, to Nairobi because they, they need to expand here. Rwanda's too small. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, we might be ranked third, but I think it's this is the more this is like the most accessible and fun ecosystem to build in so okay. if you're building here you're in the right place then you're in yeah. the right place <laughs> all right what, what um what um role does the government play in terms of we have <coughs> seen how they can create good policies but how do they hinder startups from thriving also yeah so <laughs> that's a good question um i think like things like <coughs> Government or policy where, or, or just even having bureaucracy mm -hmm. where you have officials who are cracking down on startups uh -huh. um, and, you know, like making it harder for them to expand or to launch in different countries makes it hard. Um, I, I don't know too many specific examples, yeah. but I do know that like there are some countries where it's just really hard to start building anything because getting like uh, setting up the company is really difficult. It's it's hard to register a company. Yeah. The authorities will ask you a lot of questions. They'll like ask for all these statements just to begin, and that makes it hard. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think like there are th th those sort of things hinder um, the ecosystem. I think it's also the responsibility of big startups like a Twigger or like a with Soko or whichever company to work with government and, and to like build that relationship. And that should be going two ways. I think startups should be working closely. Government should be working closely with startups as well. Okay. Because I mean, it, it's like, it's a faster way to solve problems. The, yeah, the continent's problems, right? Okay, yeah. makes a lot of sense. And um, for a startup that's someone who's, who wants to start a startup, are there mm. key skills that <coughs> uh, they need to have for them to come up with you know, sustain uh, the startup uh, initiative or something. Yeah, definitely, mm -hmm. definitely, definitely. What are some of those? So, so everyone has ideas, um, but like you need to be good at execution, which mm -hmm. means getting things done. Okay. Um, so I think the best founders, I also invest in startups. Um, uh -huh. So like I have to think about this a lot, like am I investing in the right person? Okay. Um, and I think the best founders uh, really have a bias towards action. They just do things. Like they don't ask for permission, they just go build it and they okay. launch it and it's like, they'll have an idea and they'll do something about it the next day. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's the first one. The second is that yeah. as a founder, you're really building, it's really like you're building relationships with a lot of people, your customers, your partners, your mm -hmm. investors, um, your people who you'll hire. So you need to be good at like communicating with people, yeah. building networks, building relationships. That's important too. Okay. You can't build in your room the whole time. You know, you have to get out of the house. You need to be able to. <laughs> yeah, create relationships. All right, makes sense. And, uh, you know, uh, for, for startups, not all are into tech, but is there um, an upper hand for people who have uh, embraced technology with uh, creations? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, not all startups, some startups are boring. Like, they're like, um, like we're just going to do an insurance company, but do it, like, way faster and for, you know, supply chain or something. Mm -hmm. That's not that exciting, right? Yeah. Um, and you don't need 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. So other startups are very high tech and they mm. use AI or like they're on blockchain or whatever. Um, I think it helps to have that. And eventually, if you want to grow quickly, you need tech. Like mm. you need tech to help you scale. Okay. Um, but they're easy things to learn. Like I'm not technical at all. Um, I have n never written like a line of code, but I've been able to build really cool products with teams because we found the right person to do that. Uh -huh, so. Collaborating. Yeah. So for, for it's good to have someone who's techy in your team so that they help you at least Definitely. get ahead. Yeah. All right. For you uh, as an investor, because you said you invested in a lot of startups, what do you look out for just so that a startup would know what an investor looks out for? Nice. No, so you can put my email on this too so they can uh, <laughs> hit me with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I'm always looking for like, um, I always think about the founder of the person. If you think about it, like when you think, when you look at uh, companies like, I mean, we were talking about Apple before, like Steve Jobs or mm -hmm. like uh, Uber, Travis, Calacanis or uh, Airbnb or like Mark Zuckerberg. The, all these yeah. people have been led, all these companies have been great, but they've been led by single people. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been the strength of that person figuring mm -hmm. out what works that has like caused it to succeed. So. I always think about who's the right person to trust mm -hmm. with this money to go and build something big. Because even if the first thing isn't, most of the time you build something and like you think it's the best, but it's not. And then the next thing you build is like a bit better. Usually the fourth or fifth thing you build is like amazing. Okay. So you, tr you need to trust the person to get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. All right. And that, is there, do, okay, for, for pitchers, is there something that, uh, if they're looking for investors, how should they pitch? Is there a good way or something mm. that you would advise them to, to do? Yeah, I think like a good way to, like the best way to pitch is mm. by doing the work and like building the thing. It's like, it's actually like, it's interesting. A lot mm. of people go and pitch you their idea or like where they're at and it's like, okay, what have you done so far? And it's like, mm. we have a product, but we haven't launched it yet. It's like, well, mm -hmm. if you show that you're doing, you're working towards it, um, yeah. And you can show your traction as you grow, like, hey, we just tested this thing out. Hey, we just got our first hundred customers. That's really, to me as an investor, that's a lot more exciting than someone pitching me with an idea. Okay. It's kind of like, do you know the analogy? Like, mm -hmm. if someone is like waves you down asking for like a ride somewhere because their car's broken down, you probably will like drive past. Hopefully not, but like you, you pr you're more likely to drive past. Uh -huh. But if they start pushing their car, Ah, you're more inclined to exactly. help. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah. And founders need to do a lot more of that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. All right. Nice. And uh, now, is there, are there particular trends? Or how do I put it? Um, are there <coughs> some innovative business models and uh, strategies being employed by tech startups to address local market needs? Good question. Um, yeah, there's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, just trying to think like what a good example might be. Um, I think that there's like the, there's a there's a growing amount of things we can now do with AI, uh -huh, um, which becomes okay. interesting. So I, I think we're even the companies I've invested in are starting to incorporate AI into how they build things. Mm -hmm. You know, like let's say there's a company that helps um, guest houses like monetize and like get more bookings in. So you want to mm -hmm. stay at like a, at a, a nice guest house, you book through their platform. Um, now they can help. This mm -hmm. is actually a company called Tripitaka um, here in Kenya. Now they help, uh, they're going to start helping companies like launch websites in like minutes through AI. They'll just tell the AI bot, hey, I want a website that has a nice picture of a beach or like okay. uh, this like button here and this here. Um, I don't think it's this far along, but uh, you know, this is the ambition. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it will just generate that. And that's really, that's really cool, you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. having that simplicity. Yeah. Wow, interesting, yeah. And I, I, um, some tech giants like Google are also pushing for that. I've seen that they have an accelerator program for African startups. Yeah. So, and uh, they want them to use AI to solve local challenges. So AI is really coming in strong. It is. Now, finally, we, before we close this up, where do you see uh, tech startups in Africa in the next few years? How are we going? I think we're going to have, a, to be honest, I think in the short term, it won't be great. There's going to be a lot of L's, like a lot of companies will, uh, will fail um, because okay. in the short term, mm -hmm. uh, like big companies too. But um, in the long term, we're going to have some really, really impressive companies that will, um, that will like really change how things, how things operate on the continent. And I think we're seeing a few of those start to come mm -hmm. up now. Okay. Um, so in a few years, I'm very optimistic. So uh, we're, we're, do, we're not doing bad as much as companies are closing and they're laying off people. 
it's still the journey and we are heading towards something the right place. And also just a, just a heads up, like 90% of startups that begin fail. So uh -huh. it's normal. Like what's happening at like a lot of these companies or them shutting down, totally normal. Uh -huh. That's like, that's the rule of thumb. Like it's probability, okay. most of them fail. <laughs> they so. have to fail for, 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 we, for us to succeed yeah. at some point. Exactly. Because uh, the 10% right. will be big, right? Okay. Yeah. What um, advice um, would you give to a startup, a, f a founder who's just come up with an idea, who wants to implement it, not sure how to go, where to go, you know, mm. what to do, who to bring in. So what advice would you give to uh, a startup? Yeah. I think it's just, just do it, like do, just get into it and start mm -hmm. building. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're doing the perfect thing, but just start doing something and build momentum and you'll figure it out. I think if you're someone who is proactive and thinks about the direction of what they're building, mm -hmm. you'll probably figure it out. Also, everything you need to build that thing is on the internet. You don't need any, you don't need money to do it. You mm -hmm. probably don't need like to hire anyone to do it. You can start building the most basic version of what you need online and some of our biggest companies were built on like mm. no code websites that are free Great. and they're billion dollar companies still so you, you know you don't need like a lot of money to get started okay yeah. so start with where what you have where you are exactly. uh, i have i had forgotten to ask this question i have to ask it <laughs> are there specific areas where uh which have a lot of potential compared to others like fintech or uh, if someone wants to st to, mm. to have a st to start something yeah, other specific areas that will do well as compared to the others? Yeah, so if you think about our startup story, um, you know, even looking, it, like I'll use the US as an example, mm -hmm. before like eBay could really take off, they needed PayPal, right? So that tells you before like online commerce could be big, you needed payments. Mm -hmm. um, so fintech's actually important. Before you can move, you know, an Amazon delivery from like the warehouse to your house, you need like strong logistics. So there's a lot of like base stuff that still needs to be built for mm. the rest to be built on top. So I'd be thinking, what's a really fundamental problem that everyone struggles with that I can fix? Um, not like, you know, how do I make, you know, your, your food order get to your house faster? That's not really important. I, like you want to think about the baseline stuff mm -hmm. that are building blocks for the rest of the companies to build on top of. Okay, yeah. good advice. <laughs> Thank you very much, <laughs> Caleb. Uh, where can people get you on your social media and uh, how can they subscribe to your newsletter and everything? This is your camera. Oh, cool. Um, so my newsletter is called Tech Safari. So tech, T-E-C-H, Safari, uh, S-A-F-A-R-I dot I-O um, is the newsletter. And then everything's kind of on there. There's ways to follow me on there. Um, I'm on Twitter at Caleb Maru, C-A-L-E-B-M-A-R-U. Um, on Twitter. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Kyla. Once Thanks again. for having me. So uh, it's been great getting the insights. I'm sure that uh, one founder there has uh, gotten something that they can implement. All right. So, uh, welcome. This has been Sport and Tech. We've been discussing tech startups in Africa with Kyla Maru. Hope you've enjoyed it. We're going to take a short break and then we'll be back with some entertainment interviews. Stick with us.